Hi, I'm Johnny Scott, and this is the These Five Walls podcast. Each episode is related to a mental health topic, and our group of young people talk openly about their struggles of mental health, and hope by doing so, they reach out and connect with others who are also struggling and become their virtual friends. This episode was recorded on the 5th of March 2020 before lockdown, and we have a special guest. If you would like to message the group to suggest topics to talk about, or send an encouraging message, then please do so at our email address, which is these five walls at outlook.com. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoy and find it useful. Hi guys, welcome to episode three of These Five Walls. I'm Jasmine. I'm Lucy. I'm Charlotte. I'm Johnny. I'm Amy, and we've got a very special guest here with us today. <laughs> please introduce yourself. I'm Peter. And I'm uh, I'm honoured to be here as your first guest for your podcast, and uh, if, so if, if slightly nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, who are you, Peter? What is your job? What is your role? So I'm the chief executive of Somerset Partnership Foundation Trust. So um, today's podcast, we're going to focus a little bit on anxiety and uh, stress, in the hope that we'll probably post it just before exam season, because that's kind of yeah probably most relevant then. Uh, but we wanted to talk a little bit about looking back at our childhood, the, the good things that we used to do, you know, the, okay, the, the happy one, times. The one happy time. The one happy time, just the one. <laughs> what age range nope. are we saying here? Can't find it. I, it's <laughs> like childhood, like zero to 18. You know, so that's Can't like um, places you used to go, um, you know, <laughs> magazines that you used to buy, food you used to eat, My TV programmes <laughs> you used to watch. What... Any anything spring to mind for anybody? This includes you as well, Peter. Anything <laughs> spring to mind for? What for... make? Oh, my... hmm. I know you dropped me a note, Johnny, about about this, and I, I just thinking about holidays and things, and um, we used, I used, my dad used to take me on holiday quite a bit. We went um, camping and in caravans quite a bit. Um, and my mum never came with us, which I never, I thought was always a bit strange, really, but um, but they, because uh, basically they then split up after that and uh, clearly that was why and it was just the two of us went on holiday quite a bit but um it was all it was always good we didn't really go very far but we always had a good time um so yeah there's some happy memories where did you go uh well cornwall new forest are you are we don't really know anything about you but are you from somerset it's i somerset. am from somerset yeah, i grew up in i grew up um in watchit uh, is that near western no uh, it's near minehead so near minehead yeah. up in watchit um Go to uni? In... No, I didn't. No, I didn't go. You didn't go to yeah. uni? There you go, no. kids. You don't need to go to uni. To become the chief executive, you don't have to go to uni. What happened then? What? Well, I got a place to do engineering, mechanical engineering, and um, I just decided I didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> so I, I didn't go. I thought I'll just take a bit of time out and then go. Got a job as a accountancy assistant in the NHS. And I've been in the NHS ever since. Wow. How old are you then? 19. So you've been in Somerset NHS since 19? Yes. Different different parts of it. But yeah, since yeah, 1990. Wow. Years this year. So never, wow, so never worked anywhere apart from Somerset? No, never been tempted no. to kind of move out of the county? Well, or been... Yeah, a couple of times and I... <laughs> I've been for jobs elsewhere, I didn't get them. <laughs> so it wasn't but, really a choice, you're just going to stop there. <laughs> but no, I've been lucky, I guess. The right, the right things have come up at the right time. And, uh, mm, wow, fantastic. Um, any other childhood memories? Oh, we, we made up once that um, chewing gum was made of whale blubber, so people would stop eating it. That reminds me, my sister, when I was at McDonald's, we were at McDonald's she was like, we well, yeah, had a milkshake, and she said, um, you know that's made of seaweed? Yeah, and I was like, "What?" So, like, for the next however many years, I was like, never avoided milkshakes. Mm. I was like, and then I found out they weren't. They were made of milk. And I was like, <laughs> and he's like, Is that even worse? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a great story. I was telling this earlier, actually. Um, best moment of my whole childhood, like without a doubt. We were at my mum's friend's house, and um, we were friends with her children. And we were on the trampoline, and we were all jumping around, you know, doing the thing where like you all jump in the middle at the same time. And we did it, and my brother went flying over the fence, <laughs> and he was like clinging onto the top of this fence. And we were on 
inside. We were like, Belinda, Belinda, stop, don't play with the fence. And she was like, what? What are you talking about? She like comes. Um, so she comes running out and she goes, oh, what's going on? What's going on? And then she just sees my brother's hands like over the top of the fence. And then we run around the corner and he's just like hanging off the fence into this bush and there's just blood all over his knees and stuff. And it was just, it was such, it was just one of those moments I was like, I cannot believe this has just happened. But I'm so glad it did. It was so funny. My brother. That's like one of those things, like the story you had. It was funny for everyone else, but <coughs> not him. Yeah. My my dog, um, Izzy, she once, um, we were on our, me, me, Ben and Dad were on our bikes and she, like, down the moors. And she like ran into the side of my brother's bike and just took my brother out like completely. <laughs> and he ended up in the ditch. And I was just kind of stood there like, um, Dad, Ben's in the ditch. Ben was about six. And Dad was like, what? <laughs> and looks back and Ben's bike is just on the side of the road and there's no Ben. And he had to get in the ditch and like pull my brother out by his <laughs> ankles and like put him back on the side. And my brother was just caked in mud, just stood there like, do I cry? <laughs> what do I do? If that was me, I would have pushed my brother back in the ditch. <laughs> and I was wearing I was wearing leggings and a skirt, and my dad like strips all my brother's clothes off and doesn't ask me for my leggings, puts my skirt on my brother. <laughs> <laughs> so my brother's cycling home with like n- nothing on, just this skirt, <laughs> still caked in mud. <laughs> It's ridiculous. We get home and he's just a, itchy My balls. dad like stands him on the doorstep and knocks on the door. And, like, so my <coughs> mum will come down and answer the door. And she just looks at my brother and goes, What's happened? <laughs> and like, they had to wash him off. And my mum had to go into school and explain to like his primary school why he was covered in like bramble, like scratches yeah. and things. But it, yeah, it's definitely one of the better memories. Let's move on. So the the second part of this is uh, people okay to kind of move on to. I would love to talk about anxiety. Anxiety and stress, I In suppose. Myself. Yeah. So it's not just one. My favourite cocktail. Yeah, we're doubling up. Um, I suppose the contrast between young people and professionals. You can speak from a young person's perspective better I than. I can do that. So when Jazz and I met with you, Peter, we discussed this this topic of stress and anxiety, like from. A perspective that you would give because of your job and what it requires from you um, and then obviously from a young person's point of view like what it is like living with anxiety that that kind of does so much to you that stops you from living a life that you want to live and I suppose like I was wondering on the way over does it is the stress turn into anxiety or is it the other way is it anxiety that turns into it like causes the stress. Both, both I think. Mm. As well. That's exactly. like asking, what came first, the egg or the chicken? <laughs> I think sometimes you can be stressed and then that turns itself into anxiety. And sometimes you could feel anxious, not sure what you're anxious about, then fixate on something and then become stressed about that thing. But then sometimes you, you can be stressed about something but not really care about it. And it's like, I'm just stressed about that. And then other times you can be anxious about things that aren't causing you stress. Like, like when a cup's like that, that makes me anxious but it's not really stress that just makes me incredibly like on edge and anxious right. for reference i just put a cup wonky <laughs> you on probably had higher and risen part of the table <laughs> uh, how would what what do you see of that do you see the stress coming first or the ang- anxious part is there one that comes before the other in your i don't i don't know i, I don't i i'm quite good at not letting things bother me not give me that not, power not, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I am quite good at switching off so i don't i don't spend a lot of time worrying about things from a work perspective but there are things i do get very anxious about so we talked about this to me about talking in public and with a big group of people i hate it but i have to do it but and i get and you sort of get you're able to cope with it. The more you do it, the easier it becomes because you, I guess it's what you know what to expect, and it's not a it's not an unknown. But I've uh, at one time I would have just avoided it because it would just make me really anxious about I what I was going to say, yeah. how I was going to say it, um, and I guess as you do more of it, you just get used to it because you've got to do it, and therefore you just get on with it. But it, yeah, I, I I don't think I get I don't. I'll, I'll get anxious leading up to it, but I won't. Once it's done, it's done and it's gone. Mm. 
is that something you were like as a young were you anxious as a young person and you kind of grown out of that or were you kind of always quite confident I could do I that was n- I was never confident right. and that, it's one thing I would I wish I had been more confident and I was always very shy reserved I wouldn't and I was an only child as well so I was I sort of got used to being on my own I guess so, so I wasn't confident I always thought I wasn't good enough I guess or wasn't as good as others but I think you find out that a lot of people feel like that it's not just you that feels like that but you never you never know that at the time because you don't talk about it I guess you never have some of those conversations so I, it's the one thing I would have liked to have been more confident as a child and this is a question for like related to this very sentence yeah. what, do you think that would have like your confidence would have changed if you had a brother or sister um, I don't know I, I think I think being an only child and that I think that helped so what I said just now about I don't worry about things and therefore I'm quite resilient I think being an only child probably helped with that because I just just had to get on with it yeah. myself on my own and just learn to deal with stuff I guess so I don't know I might have been yeah, but, yeah. that was my question what was your question um, when you did have to start doing like public speaking and stuff like when you first did it, did you like do anything to cope with that, or did you just literally go in like blind eyed, thought right, I'm just gonna have to do I it, or did you have like coping strategies for it? So I think I had, I had to prepare more, so I would prepare a lot to start with, and and normally then I was talking about things that I should have known about, whereas now I probably prepare less, and end up talking about things that I don't know as much about. But to start with, I would have prepared lots because I'd just been anxious about yeah. getting it wrong or talking to people who knew more about it than I did, and therefore it just yeah. Yeah, I get that. The anxiety, though, has there been a point where you would, where you have gone, I can't do this. I, I, li- I really can't get up in front of these people. Has it ever got to that point where it's been overwhelming? Not like necessarily recently. I guess but it's not. It's, it never got to the point of actually stopping me but it was close I guess and I, I guess I guess I, I did and I remember and there was one occasion where I I was I was covering for somebody else who couldn't do something at the last minute so I wasn't prepared as I should have as I needed to be as I felt I needed to be and I did come very close to not doing it I just can't just can't do it and I sort of talked to myself and said well, what what's the worst that can happen and it's within whatever half an hour this is going to be over so just do it and it did, to be fair it didn't actually go very well it wasn't a great experience because I I don't think I did a very good job but it was then done it's gone mm. um, so yeah it was yeah but it never it never got to the point of actually stopping me doing it mm. um, I, I had a similar experience when I was probably about 15 years ago, I was, I'd agreed to do a Stars in Their Eyes night, right? What's that? A Stars in Their Eyes used to be a programme on ITV. <laughs> yeah, I know that, but what's a pick... Stars in Their Eyes night? So it's like... It's a bit like X Factor, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. like where a person would say, tonight I'm going to be whoever. And so, <laughs> and it was know. for charity, so I'd said tonight but I'm going to be... And I can't remember be... what Stars in Their Eyes was. So that's I what it, Stars in Their Eyes, <laughs> with Matthew Kelly. That's right. Tonight, um, tonight, Matthew. Tonight, Matthew. That's I was, right. I was just about to say that, but I thought not. So my tonight, Matthew experience was um, tonight, Matthew. I'm going to be Liam Gallagher. I'm going to sing um, an Oasis song. <laughs> I'm picturing it now. It's, it was horrendous. And I, uh, the the person before me. So that's probably about twenty acts, and there was quite a lot of people there. And I remember it so vividly because the the person had just finished, and they said, uh, the announcer came on, and they said, ah. Uh, it's Johnny Scott, he's going to be Liam Gallagher and he's going to sing whatever I was going to sing. And uh, I, I, set, I turned to my cousin and I went, I can't do this. I, I can't do this. It's too... I need to get out of here. And, um, and she was like, oh, you've got to. Like, you're, you're next. You've got to go up. And uh, she just kind of pushed me up there and I had to do it. And I did it. And I, it just kind of happened. But like you, Pete, I've never kind of got to that point where I've got, I, I can't, I can't do it. I Don't can't go, go through with it. <laughs> but that's um, my nearest. Why did you choose Speed Liam and not Noel? Because that was. Who I inspired. That was Liam's song. What song was it? I think it was Wonderwall. Yeah, it was Wonderwall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Yeah. 
Um, I would have paid good money. And I came to see third up. <laughs> you came third? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Amazing. It um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does this mean you're good at singing? I just Johnny. mentioned it. Does this mean you're good at singing? No, no, not at all. They just um, felt sorry for yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they saw kids. the stress in my eyes, the panic. <laughs> it's not the stars in my eyes, it's stress <laughs> in my eyes. Yeah. yeah. See, I really don't think I could have done that. I don't, I just, see, that. I see, I think there's something about, in a work sense. You have to do it. I have to do it and I can do it. You're getting paid to do it. When it's about me, it would be more difficult. And I, I don't, I think I would have walked away. And not, I wouldn't have volunteered to do it, that'd be the difference. <laughs> yeah. but, I would have struggled much more with that. And so there's kind of two different yeah, pieces yeah. then, really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right, right. Definitely. You um, you both said that, like, when you got to it and you were, like, freaking out, like, I can't do this. Like, from an anxiety point of view, like, someone who has anxiety, that's, like, how I feel on a regular night. Like, and I get a lot of physical symptoms. Like, okay. when you felt like that, did you feel as, like, the physical, like, oh, my God, I'm sweating? Like, yeah, or definitely. was it just literally your brain being no, like, no, nah. def- definitely some of that physical stuff, yeah. definitely. The heart, I remember yeah. my heart yeah. was really like pounding and I, my thoughts weren't, I couldn't fix my thoughts on anything, like what was happening around yeah. me, it was, and oh. all the bodily sensations of like, where's the nearest exit, like, how Absolute am I going to get out here? Like, yeah. I remember in year six, we used to have to do like two group assemblies and we did one on, oh, I fucking knew, but I remember I had a little cuddly toy penguin that I had to wave up and do a little sentence about and I remember like standing on the big stage with like the whole like school it's fucking horrible I I was like literally shaking like that like like it was horrible I was like probably like fully shaking did you did you do it well I was talking like (laughs) (laughs) but you still did it though I still did it because my like Tutor was there like, come on, Jasper, just say it, come on, just say it. I've got one, yeah, it's sort of like pure fear rather than anxiety. There was this ride at Disneyland Paris and it was called like Armageddon or something like that. And I cannot stress to you, it was the worst experience of my whole life. It was all like red and dark and shaking. I, was I think I've been on that ride, to be fair. It's scary, I know the one you mean. The worst. Personally, I, I love roller coasters and shit. So I lo- I, me, I've never had a problem with any other roller coasters, mm. just that one. And you I was sat on the floor, one. clinging onto my mum's legs. I was like, when's it going to stop? Oh, oh. And it literally got to the point where I was like, mum, I need to get off. Mm. And she was like, it's nearly finished, it's fine. And I was like, don't care. Take I need off. to get off. As a parent, that must be so horrible because you're like, I can't do anything. Yeah, you wanna... I didn't get to go off early. I I was yeah. bawling my eyes out. Come off afterwards, I was like, oh my god. I'm. What if that's where it all started? Did you do Space Mountain? Or whatever. Oh, I wasn't tall enough. We looked for some like mini mini miles high heels so I could be tall enough, <laughs> but couldn't find. Oh, it. Oh, I was on it and then I was lining up, and then it showed on the little screen what it does to your heart. They count out. It's like that man, isn't it? Like... And I was like, yeah, I'm not going on this. Dad, go on your own. <laughs> I walked out back to my mum. And don't thought you would have hated that because you're in pitch black going upside down, it's fun, bumping though. around. I was like, yeah, I'm glad I could go on that. I suppose I, I, I don't really talk about stories from my life, but I only give that illustration because I don't know the other side of anxiety. So that's Lucky. a really anxiety provoking memory for me, but I still overcome it. Like, I think it's like room. That, that feeling, it's like that. When you're sat with your best friend having a nice time and then that feeling just comes out of nowhere. Or you're walking to school and that feeling just comes out of nowhere, like you're having a good day and then bam. That's the thing, like I'll wake up and I'll be anxious. Yeah. And like sometimes in my dreams I can actually feel myself being anxious even mm. though I'm asleep and I'll like wake up in an absolute sweat from where like the physical symptoms yeah. still happen when you're asleep so it's like, what, so you cannot like- escape it. Beating heart. Yeah, I can like, feel it. Like the, the dream will relate to like if I'm feeling anxious. So like, yeah. say like with the like my heart's beating really quickly. Usually I'll be running in my dream, but I I can feel the anxiety. So I'm like, you know in that like sleep state when you're asleep but you're kind of awake, and then I will wake up and I'll literally be anxious the whole day as if I that just set me up for yeah pure anxiety. I physically had a panic attack in my sleep. Like I've like in like when I've been asleep I've been having a panic attack and in my dream I've had a panic attack. Like, like I've been dreaming that I'm having a panic attack. It's horrible, isn't it? and it's, it was awful. It's like harder because you can't. You as much as you can't really control it when you're awake. When you're yeah. asleep, like you really can't control it because it's disorientating in a way. Like you know you're asleep, but your body's like 
wake up like I'm freaking out like come on that happened to me the other day and it was it was like it's never been so bad I was having like a nightmare but it wasn't like a proper nightmare it was just like a not nice dream and um, I'd woke up and I'd actually wet myself I'd wet the bed because I was that scared and that anxious that's happened to me before and I woke up and I just I just sat there and I was like I was so embarrassed and I was like I can't tell my mum about this and I was like only 18 like it's not it's not like a bad thing it like Absolutely. I couldn't help it and I just sat there and I was like I can't go and get a sheet because people will wake up so I got a towel put it on the bed um put a pillow on the bed and then put another towel over it and then slept at the bottom of my bed so I wasn't sleeping in my wee it's horrible mm, I mean I, I the next day it was all I was thinking about I was like oh my god I, I went to bed last night I'm 18 I went to bed but it was like that mm. I felt it in my, like in my dream I like feel my heart race and I was sweating mm. Yeah, happy days. How, how do you how do you rationalise your ang- your anxiety? Is, do you kind of go, I'm doing, I know why I'm because I can't think in an ordered way. Is that do you, do you try and rationalise your it's anxiety, so hard. or is it's it? So hard. A lot of the time, I don't know why I'm anxious. So like, like there's nothing yeah. to rationalise. Yeah. I'm literally just there, like right. I feel like this, and, and there's like, nothing that you can why. be like. If I get rid of that, I can fix that. Yeah. It's just sort of, yeah. And it's like CBT like tries to work through like how you feel and your emotions and stuff and like mm-hmm. trying to challenge all those things. But when there's nothing to challenge, like you're just kind of left there like, what do I do? Why am I like this? Yeah. Not being able to leave the house. I, you know, I hear people say that because they're so anxious. I go, oh, it must be terrible. I, how, how do you end up leaving the house? Because obviously... I'm like that on Mondays with uni. I'll get up, I'll get ready, get dressed. And it's all fine, get my bag together, sit in my car and just have this huge panic attack and can't go to uni. And it, on, on Thursday I was, I'm fine, even though it's a full day, but Mondays I just can't cope with. Mm. I, haven't, I haven't been to uni on a Monday for like a month and a half, two months, because I just can't do it. But there's no reason because my teacher's lush, it's half a day, nice lessons, interesting stuff, but today. But there's like, there's nothing you can do to fix it. No. Obviously, there must be something because people manage, people manage it, it, but I've not yet found the key. Mm. Do you have people around you, Peter, that, that you work with that kind of take some of the pressure and the sort of anxiety away from you, and that helps, or do you pretty much keep it to yourself? Um, that this is my problem. I'm, you know, I'm going to sort this out myself. No, I think I think there I'm are people because I mean we've got a, so as part of the exec team. There's nine of us in the team, so that so we've got to work as a team as well. So I think that does help and they're different people are better at different things so it, it is a genuine team and therefore and we do talk about the problems and the issues and that all helps and again I, so that works well I, I, they'll probably say I don't share enough um, because that's just the way I am I don't I, I, it's because again I guess it's more partly my personality where I will probably I probably should share more with them in some ways what share what more of the more of just just more maybe about what I'm thinking, okay. what is what is worrying me and stuff. I won't naturally share some of that, I guess, which they'll find frustrating. Mm. But um, but that's not because I'm protecting them from stuff or thinking it's my problem and I've got to deal with it. I don't, it's not really about that, I don't think. Because I think if I was uh, in your shoes, like the NHS in Somerset is the biggest provider for jobs. Yeah. Like, and like the massive budget like finances responsible for you know so many things I can't, I can't deal with that yeah but you but uh-huh. you can't but i can't i don't i can't control everything and i can't know everything either so that it's about getting it into perspective i guess isn't it and it's not it's not about me really it's not i don't have to do everything if i there would be a disaster if i had to do everything and I think when you're when you're um, not doing it, or you don't have to do it, it maybe looks harder than it is. And as I was progressing in my career, I've been working in jobs, looking at my boss, thinking I'd never want to do their job. I couldn't do it. But almost the closer you get, the easier it appears. And then you get to the place where you think, well, I could do it better than they could do it. <laughs> so, and, and I guess as your career develops, that's what happens because you learn more, you're more experienced and you, you can do more. I, I always want, how the hell do these people keep all of this stuff in their head? Mm. They keep it in their head because it's their sort of part of things that are happening every day in conversations, that it's just there. They don't, you don't have to go out of your way to find stuff. But, but that's it about time and experience and confidence. I suppose just to bring that, just throw that back over here to the young people, would, like, would anxiety stop you from, like, I don't know, progressing in life you know, oh, I can't do that 
I, I could never see myself kind of being that person or because some of you have like got, if got you jobs asked me and that, at uni and like keep pushing yourself like to if do if you asked me that like five years ago would you let your anxiety would your anxiety stop you from progressing I'd probably be like yeah but now no there's not really a whole lot that will stop me doing anything what's, what's stopped you from thinking like that that's like asking me why the world's in no. I genuinely I don't understand I don't know I just stopped thinking uh-huh. like that and got better and I think it's because you do things and you complete it like GCSEs for me it was like I can't I can't do that I will never be able to do that I will never be able to get good grades but I did I did my exams and I got good grades and that sort of like I was so so anxious about it but I did it and I think the more experiences you have of that, like going for jobs, being let down, not getting jobs, but then when you eventually get the job, it's like, I've done that. Like, no one else has done that for me. No one else has gone to that interview and impressed them. That's on me. And I think the more experiences you have like that, the more you realise I am pretty decent and I am capable of, capable of mm. things. And I think that sort of links back to what you were saying. Definitely. The more experiences you have, whether they're good or bad, they teach you that you can you can do it and even if you can't do it it's not the end of the world like the world won't that, I think that's that's something that helped me a lot like I a couple of weeks ago I got a grade for one of my essays and I thought I hate that that's awful but I went outside and the birds were still singing this like the sky was still there trees were still standing and it was like I didn't get the greatest mark but like the world didn't close in on itself like I don't know when bad things happen, the world doesn't collapse. And I think that's sort of what it feels like with anxiety. It's like you're waiting for something really bad to happen because you've done something wrong. And when that doesn't come, it's sort of like, okay, you sort of like get a little bit of control back. I can't rationalise that when I'm feeling panicky, mm. but now it's sort of like that's, that's the way I mm. sort of connect it. I think it's like when I was younger like I would avoid everything mm-hmm. like if I was anxious I'd be like I'm not doing that yeah mm-hmm. because like, I just couldn't see why I should put myself in a position to be uncomfortable like I'm living my life I don't want to live it uncomfortably and face being knocked down as yeah. well like, I think the best way but, to get past it is to put yourself in absolutely uncomfortable positions. Yeah. like you need to actually fight that like why should I be uncomfortable because the, the more you feel that uncomfortableness like the less it gets every time yeah and I think that's why now I can do everything I can do because like years and years of actually forcing myself yeah. like, I don't want to like get up for example I literally didn't want to get mm. out of bed but the more I stayed in bed the worse it got yeah. so you yeah, exactly. just have to be like it right you up stand up it. like Lucy don't be so like don't be so like boring and lazy get up yeah. <laughs> and then like kind of force yourself into it and then after a while it kind of fizzles away it comes normal doesn't it like mm. doing things so how you build resilience then by just by overcoming small things small th- yeah I get think more so resilient. but I suppose you can go back as well as absolutely yeah yeah you can think you're doing really well and then yeah I think sometimes like I literally just for example I just said it like telling myself like don't be so boring and lazy that's literally what I used to say to myself and I think like as much as it did get me out of bed like I was still being negative to myself as if like being in bed was a bad thing yeah but actually I think it's like accepting the fact that sometimes life is just too hard to get up and sometimes you can't like you can't do it and like I think it's important to know that that's okay as well it's all part of the process and like it's healing isn't it absolutely if you had a broken leg you wouldn't be lying in bed thinking get up you're so lazy you wouldn't you think no I wish I could get up but my leg's broken, so I gotta wait. Mm-hmm. And it's the same, like, you wake up and you beat yourself up for staying in bed, but really it's like, I wish I could get out of bed, but I'm not physically well enough. And if I can get out of bed, can I make it out of the house? Probably not. But it's sort of like that same stigma, like you beat yourself up so much more mm-hmm. about your mental health than you do your physical health. Yeah, absolutely. But then with people that are like, end the stigma around mental health, like, talk about it, blah, blah, blah. But then yeah. when it comes to yourself, it's like, oh, shit, right, I'm just going to crawl away in a hole. Yeah. Kind of look back and realise how st- the strength that it takes to do what people do automatically. It, but for you, you kind of, you go, oh, I, it takes me so much more. I think that's like the weirdest thing, mm. thinking stuff like that. Like, wow, there's people that, that can get out of bed. They're normal. Yeah, absolutely. It's so mm. strange. 
And that can, like... There's people that can get on a bus and ask for a ticket. Yeah. Without having to rehearse it 500 times before they get yeah. on the bus. Yeah. And then sit on the bus for the entire journey and think, did I ask correctly? Yeah. Is everyone on the bus mm. laughing at me because mm. I said it wrong? <laughs> so, like, anxiety isn't just about your actions, being able to do something. It's about, like, I rehearse getting into the office, what I'm going to do when I get to my desk. Like, that kind of level of anxiety. Yeah. So, like, oh, my exactly. ex-boyfriend right. lived in Burnham... And I would have to get the bus and a train or a bus and a bus to get to him. So I'd spend, like, the whole evening before checking all the bus times and realigning it because, like, for some reason, missing a bus, even though I'd only have to wait 25 minutes to get another one... It's the end of the world. ...or wait for the next mm-hmm. train, I can't, I can't do that. My I'm so obsessed with times, but I have to plan everything the night before... So I need to leave with this time so I can get this one and then this one and then this one. If I'm like leaving to go to work and it only takes me like twenty five minutes, I have to leave like an hour before. I have to be like so if I I've got to be at work ten, I'll leave at nine, even though it's only gonna take me twenty five minutes to get there because then I've got time in case all this traffic happens, which it never does. Mm. But I've got to do that because if I am late, the world is gonna end. And you know the one day that you don't leave early, there'll be a shitload of traffic. Yeah. That's the way my head sees it anyway. I, I'm a bit like that. No, I'm not. As, anyway, I know it's bad now, but I <laughs> hate, hate You're being freaking. late. Absolutely hate being late. And I'm, I'm quite, I like it quite often now for various reasons, but when I was younger, I was absolutely terrified of being late. And it's the same thing, I've done the same thing. Check I was out, always late for check school. Check everything. Don't get me wrong, I was always late for school. But if I've got to be somewhere, I've got to do something. Are you... On the other side, if someone is late... Does that really kind of wind you up as well? Pisses me oh right off. Oh my god. No, not really. No. Pisses I'm not, me not, right I'm off. Not, not to the point. I you have one job and it has to be on time. So if, like you, if you've arranged to see me at this time, you be here at this time. Right. If, if not, I'm, I end up like pacing around. I actually obsess over time. Time's like the thing I obsess over. Mm. 